And thanks to Apocalypse Events, the village. Don't all rush there at once. Gina Miller's with us now. Welcome to the program. Now, you said at the end there, talking about voting for people who do the best for Britain. But that's just code for wanting to vote for people who stop Brexit, isn't it? We're not talking about um, stopping Brexit. This it's what is... you want to do. No, it is not. If you stand back from the emotion of this all, it is pure logic and common sense that there are all options on the table. And there are broadly three options. One is for a fantastic deal where everyone gets what they want. The second is WTO, which the government itself has accepted is far more complicated than they first envisaged. And the third is looking at if we would be better off remaining. Now, anybody who says... And you would you vote to remain. No, because I was never for a remain or leave. It was about remaining if that was the best option. But this has to be about options. But everything you do is calculated to thwart Brexit. That's what you're about. It, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a democracy. You have am... to thwart whatever you, you want. But why not just admit it instead of having this kind of carapace of other motives over it? Well, I love that you know what's in my mind, because it's not. <laughs> it's I it's actually quite easy to see. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, no, it is hold not. Hold on, you just talked about a country, we will be deserted by foreign workers. That, that's the, that was how you opened your piece. You think we're going to hell in a handbasket if we leave. No, I'm interested in the facts. I'm not interested in the emotions of any of this. Well, why will we, we, we be deserted be by foreign workers? Because you can already see that if we are not going to have um, access to free movement, there will be a problem. Why will we be deserted by foreign workers by leaving the EU? Because we will not have free movement of people. But why will we oh, be we deserted? Deserted means all the people coming who are already here will leave. Why? Well, from the experience I've had since I started my court case, there is an air around people in the UK where they feel that How they've been kicked left? in their study. They haven't left no. yet. But so why, why would they? we be deserted? I mean, my, the point is... That, that phrase, deserted by foreign workers, a Britain much poorer, it shows what you really think. It's a perfectly legitimate point of view, but you don't seem to want to be honest enough just to admit that that is what your game plan is. I'm honest enough to say that nobody knows the future. I'm well, not don't you just say. said we'll be deserted by foreign workers. No, that is a possibility. And already we're seeing that people are feeling that they're not welcomed here and that they're somehow... Uh, who's not welcome here? I get thousands and thousands of emails from people and messages and phone calls from people saying that they feel then they are no longer welcomed. But that's because I'm... you've taken a high profile position. We all get that. I get lots of attacks on, on things as, as well. And you've. No, 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 no. I've not had attack. attacks. I'm not talking about the attacks. No, I mean verbal attacks. And, and, no, no, I'm not and talking so about the attacks. I'm talking about people's experiences of how they feel. Okay. They feel that they're no longer welcomed here. Well, that they feel that this is not the country that they thought it was. All right. What do you make of Gina's tactical voting plan? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, to talk about a Brexit that's not really a Brexit is a complete nonsense. We cannot continue to be governed by EU laws, remain subject to free movement of labour, and actually have anything that qualifies for the title Brexit. Uh, it is one or the other. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, I share Andrew's view, you know, for goodness sake, say what you mean, which is that you want to remain. Uh, and let's have that debate. Um, my worry always was this was going to be, turn into a second referendum. There are other issues which we ought to be discussing, but that wasn't the question you asked me. It was about tactical no, voting, yes, wasn't it? Uh, will it work? It generally doesn't. I mean, you'll always get some uptake, but it generally doesn't. And every time uh, I hear an election, so, oh, well, there's going to be tactical voting, there's going to be alliances, there's going to be people withdrawing in favour of other people. It doesn't actually happen because the canvas is so broad that in the end people aren't just deciding on Brexit, what? however important it is. I mean, what? would you really vote for Corbyn just because there's a pro-Remain candidate there? I mean, you won't. Well, I mean, Mr. Corbyn is not you're overwhelmingly pro-Remain, I think, as we can see. That's not, that wasn't my point. Should, that wasn't my point. Why should there not be a referendum on the final deal? I, I have to say, I'm not the biggest fan of referenda, um, partly because I think people elect members of parliament to give effect to their wishes and I think we saw with the referendum and the triggering of article 50 the difficulties for members of parliament when they're juxtaposed against a, a direct democratic popular 
vote. So personally, I would rather it was members of parliament voting on so it. So it goes to the Commons rather than to, to a referendum? Is what, what Yes, because we, you know, we're elected to do, a, to do a job. Now, I think what uh, Jean is doing is very interesting and actually very helpful in the context of this election for people uh, who, you know, are part of that 48% who want to know where different MPs stand on things. And I think what your project is going to help voters do is be able to uh, identify whether you've got somebody who is in favour of a soft Brexit. Um, what is or, a soft, what Brexit? Is a soft Brexit? Yeah. Well, Thank you. look, there are two ways of... This is my subjective analysis of it. I know Anne's That's got why a different... I'm asking your opinion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Look, there are two ways, I think, of withdrawing from the EU. You can do it in a quite extreme way, in a job-destroying and livelihood-destroying no, way. What's a soft, what's a soft Brexit? Brexit? Well, my, my definition of mm -hmm. uh, a soft Brexit would be where we remain a member of the single market. So we'd, we'd still be subject to the European Free Court of Justice? Labor. Yes, but hang on just a minute. I think that's, that's right. Yeah, that's it? right. But, but I, so but, in what way have well, we left? Well, hang on just a minute. Let, let, me, let me finish. Um, a lot is made of that point, but of course, if we want to continue trading with the European Union, the free trade agreement will be governed by some other authority. Well, but and, it will not, and, will not and, necessarily be governed by also, the European Court. Yes, but also, um, Andrew, if we want to continue trading into the European Union, as uh, leavers and remainers are both um, saying, we're going to have to comply with the standards and the rules that are set so by the European Union. we have to do that for America, to export to America. Sure, we have to, but, but this to is, do that, but there's but, no, but, last time I looked, there's no freedom of movement but, between but, Britain and America. Let me come back to Gina Miller's but, very but patient just, here. Would you like a referendum when, if and when there is a deal done? No, I think it should be up to the ministers in Parliament. That's why or we or have MPs. a Parliament, and MPs in Parliament, mm. because we have a parliamentary democracy. We don't have a direct democracy. And I think if we elect MPs, they should be able to vote, mm. have a meaningful vote on whatever the deal is. But they is. are. Well, we don't know that. Well, they are. How could, how could any government stop them? Well, we've, well, if you look at the government's um, copybook on um, using the Royal Prerogative Article 50, in my case, um, they tried to bypass Parliament. So but the how do you know they won't do said, that again? Well, the government's already said it's inconceivable for the European Parliament to have a vote on the final deal and not the British Parliament. So it's, no, it's on Mrs. the Mrs May has promised that there will be a vote. Um, on a hard deal or no deal. That's not a meaningful vote. A meaningful vote is a vote on all the options that are available to MPs. Now, a meaningful vote is, this is the deal that, that has been negotiated and there will only be one deal negotiated at the end of it and this is its components. And do we accept that or not? That is the only question that can be asked because there is no other deal. Yeah, but there, no, but there are but, three but options no on the deal. No, on there are three there options, a, not there's two. There's, a, there's another way of doing it, which is to give Parliament a vote earlier so that it can actually say to the Prime Minister, look, go back. And oh, it can tie the Prime Minister's hands in negotiations. Go back. Oh, that's well, bright, isn't it? Well, I, I disagree with this notion of how it affects our bargaining oh, power. Of course it will affect But an interesting thing, and I just slightly come on a different tack here, is the extent to which this general election that we're going to have is ultimately going to be governed by this Remain Leave issue, or whether by the end of this seven-week period, seven weeks today, sure. but we're talking about that, back that, to that, that's process. economic we're competence. About that well, it's not, whether it's economic the, the, competence, right, leadership, we'll coming on to the election in a minute, I want to stick with the reason why we've got Gina Miller here tonight. It's been, a, I think, a legitimate criticism from the Remain side that the country voted to leave, but the actual shape of leaving uh, w was not exactly clear. People had different views uh, about it. Mrs. Mayor herself was a Remain, uh, Remainer. But if she now campaigns uh, for Brexit in this election campaign, in which she says, which is her position, we're leaving membership of the single market, we want to leave the customs union, we want to get out of the European court, and we want an end of free movement of people. Yes. And if she wins the election on a big mandate, she's got a negotiating mandate to do that, hasn't she? Absolutely. So I, it would be absolutely wrong to thwart no her. Well, no, of course there wouldn't be. Because, I mean, the... the, the so what's the point of this progressive alliance? Because what we're talking about is ensuring that there isn't this huge mandate. Because the options, as far as we see it, is that you have a, you know, you look back to what Francis Pym said in 1983, is that, you know, an elected majority is almost an elected um, dictatorship. And that's the thing we're saying. Well, it was people, Hailsham that um, said election dictatorship. But Francis it, Pym just speculated that maybe the Tory majority, majority could be, too, going to lead to be that. too big. But you would accept, therefore, if she gets a, because she will have to spell out what her negotiation negotiating position is, is, is going to be I think all the, man, uh, the manifestos uh, will. Uh, and if she gets a mandate for that, 
then that's it. She's got the mandate to go and negotiate if she on has, that basis. She does, but no prime minister is above the law. And if in 18 months, two years, five years, whenever it is that the prime minister comes back with the negotiated package and doesn't give parliament a full meaningful vote, then we may have to seek the advice of the courts on to whether she's allowed to do that. Back to the courts. Because nobody is above the law. Uh, I understand that. Um, but if you turned tinkering or interfering with the democratic process into a rich woman's hobby? Um, when is it my hobby and when is it I'm a rich well, woman? Well, it seems it's, it's, um, I actually have a significant day job and several other day jobs. Mm. This is not a hobby. I'm a transparency campaigner. I've done this for nearly a decade. And also, is it okay that if I'm rich because I've earned my own money that I might use it to do no, my I've just wondered duty? whether it's become your hobby or not. It's absolutely not my hobby. Because, I'm doing what I think is right. Because when you did the court case at the beginning, you said that I just want the court case to rule that the Commons gets a vote on it. That's absolutely. all I'm It was about. about democracy. And you did absolutely. that. Absolutely. But now you're on to uh, a progressive alliance, and now you're saying I may have to go back to the Which courts. is still about democracy. Yeah, but it, it is seems still about democracy. It's given you a new purpose in life, hasn't it? Absolutely not. It's the same huh? purpose, which is everyone has the duty to stand up. For what they believe in and if they believe in democracy then stand up and talk about it okay Judy Miller thank you I think we'll see you again